Hey Cadillac fans, welcome back to another episode from the West Lake Region how-to videos. Uh, today we're going to work on something a little bit older. Uh, this is a 1959 Cadillac Sedan DeVille and we are having a problem with the fuel pump. So we are going to show you how to rebuild one of these original style fuel pumps. Okay, so we've got our fuel pump off. Now the first thing we're going to do is take this cap off, just removing these four screws. And once that cap is off, there's this gasket that comes with it. We'll be able to see the two valves inside and see how they're looking. I recommend trying to leave the screws in place uh, wherever possible so you don't get confused as to which screws go where. The two middle ones are larger than the ones on the side, so it's difficult to mix those up, but still... The more you can keep screws in the same place, the easier it's going to be for reassembly. So with those four screws, this cap comes right off. And we've got a problem right away. Um, these are your two valves that determine the flow of fuel. So this one here is going to draw the, draw the fuel in. This one here locks it and make sure it goes out to the carburetor here. Um, this valve is loose. This valve is not in place. I'm going to show this to you right there. You can see that. This valve should be firmly seated in there. This valve should not be coming loose like that. That is a problem. Um, so you can see you see these valves are the same. You have to have them facing opposite directions in order for this fuel pump to work correctly. Uh, the easiest way to deal with this is put this fuel pump into a vise and it'll sit nice and simple for you. Uh, one of the challenges with getting this in is you're going to see that this, as you try to tap down on one end, the other end, you know, so we tap down this side, now this side wants to lift out. You need to get this seated evenly all the way around. And to do that, we're going to take a nice wide copper bar. Uh, it doesn't have to be copper, but you want something that's not going to flake off that covers the full width. And we're going to tap it in with this to make sure it's seated straight. Okay, hopefully you can see that this is evenly seated now. And that's important because if you don't have these valves seated all the way down, Fuel is going to get past them, and the valve is not going to be able to do its job. Uh, and you can see that all the valve is, is there's a diaphragm in here with the spring that's backing it up. And that spring pushes that diaphragm closed. So when fuel is coming in, fuel comes in through here, comes into this bowl. And when the uh, cam pushes this, this is a diaphragm right here that sucks this valve open. And when the diaphragm pushes down, that will cause that sucking action to pull the fuel in. When the diaphragm pushes up, that's where this seal pushes up against here and keeps the gas from going back out the way it came in. Now, if this valve is not seated correctly, as you saw, what happens is the, the fuel gets sucked in, but the fuel gets pushed right back out the inlet line again instead of getting pushed over to the output. This valve is facing the other direction, so its diaphragm is pushing down. There's a little spring behind here, so it's pushing down. So when this diaphragm goes down and pulls suction into here, it can pull suction into here. And the purpose of this diet, this valve here, is to seal that up so you're not taking gas from the carburetor and pulling it back in. Okay, we've now peened this over. Uh, the one on the left is not as clean of a, a peening job as the one on the right. You're basically taking the punch and knocking that little bit of aluminum inward a little bit to kind of create a friction so that that valve cannot come back out again. So this one's in place. Now we're good with that. The other problem is this guy here. Uh, we have to basically, um, I think we're going to have to flip this one over, looks like. And that means we'll have to undo all these screws 
on the outside. So that's going to be our next step here. Okay, we've got all the uh, screws out that go around. Uh, you don't have to keep those in a particular place because they're all the same. Uh, one of the things you need to keep in mind is make sure you fig you note or maybe photograph the orientation of this bowl versus the bottom casting because you've got all these screws and you could put it in any direction and if you don't put it on the right way then your inlet and your outlet are not going to be in the right place once you put this back on the car so make sure you make note of that now we're going to take that off there's the diaphragm that i was talking about that basically will draw the fuel in and out so this diaphragm that you see right here you can see it's kind of raised here this is actuated by the cam here you got a little push rod that pushes on this lever when that lever gets pushed on that's going to cause this diaphragm to go up and down there's a spring behind it and that spring wants to push this diaphragm up it's a pretty strong one so you know as you unscrew this bowl this thing's going to push that bowl up so don't be surprised by that now we've got the bowl off uh, we are going to flip it over we're going to dump a little bit of gas out so just be prepared for that and there's the valve so this is our outlet valve you can see now that I've got this out you see the how this one looks this is the one we peened in so this is the inlet this is the outlet and you can see they're identical just in different directions so see how they are now we've got the the top one has the has the i'll call it the mushroom sticking up and when we flip it over now the bottom one is the mushroom sticking up that's when we peened in now we got to do the same thing we're going to have to peen this wall over here to keep this valve in place same procedure we're going to take a, a punch we're going to just displace a little bit of metal along the edge just to keep this valve in position and we'll be ready to put it back together again okay here we are we have peened this valve in place this is this one came out really nice this one uh not as nice but it's still gonna it's still gonna do the job all you need is to just displace it enough that this valve is not going to slip past this because this valve fits snug all the way around it just doesn't fit real snug that the valve can't pop out so all you need is just a little bit of displacement and that's going to handle it if you can do this oh that's beautiful um the other thing i didn't mention is i put this onto a block of wood uh you don't want to just put this right on a hard surface for a couple of reasons number one you can see i left the uh, fuel filter uh cap on and that's higher than what this is so that is keeping that off the ground so we're not tapping on that number two when you're hitting this casting we're not uh we're not putting on a hard surface so that this board can kind of absorb that a little bit so the rest of this housing does not get damaged uh, we are now going to begin to reassemble but first uh, you can see that these self-tapping screws are leaving some shavings behind here uh, we definitely do not want that in the engine so we're going to fire up the air compressor we're going to blow out this uh, diaphragm a little bit and we're going to blow out this casting on both sides to make sure that we have no issues but you can see our peening on the inlet valve and now you can see the peening on the outlet valve uh, these should now stay in place and that should resolve our problems uh, when it comes to replacing the diaphragm you're going to have to push down on this diaphragm here take the spring pressure off and then take a punch and punch that uh, pin out of there uh, that pin i believe has a little c-clip it's kind of hard to see here because it's dirty right now there it is i believe uh, so you have to knock that out and take that pin out uh, not much more to it okay we're going to start to put this back together we've got it lined up where we want it uh, that is how the orientation was before uh, one of the things to take note of is that these are self-tapping screws they're cut thread cutting screws uh, because this is aluminum you don't want to be cutting fresh threads in here 
So when you put it in, you need to line it up so that it will use the previous cut threads. And that means getting it in there, turning it counterclockwise till you feel it drop into the threads. And it's really just a feel. You'll feel as you turn counterclockwise that it's going to drop in. And when that happens, that's when you know you're in, into those same threads again. So make sure you do that for every screw. Otherwise, if you're cutting new threads, you run the risk of stripping this housing out and then it's shot and you're going to have to buy a new one. So keep that in mind if you have the uh, thread cutting screws in your assembly. We now have the uh, bowl screwed down all the way. All the uh, screws are in place. We are going to blow this out one more time just to be safe. And then we are going to take the lid and we will screw the four screws down on the lid and we'll have it ready to go back on the car. One last comment I'll make before we put this back on the car. Um, this lever uh, is getting pushed by the cam, so you want to grease the bottom of that lever. But it also, it's a good idea to pack that lever area with grease because a lot of corrosion can occur in there. So putting grease in there will kind of keep that out, keep the moisture out, and uh, keep that well protected. So fill that with grease before you put that in the car. When you put this in, make sure that this lever is sitting on top of the push rod. Uh, that push rod is going to be pushing on there, and if you don't line that up correctly, you'll have problems. Other than that, it's pretty simple to put on. We're at the final step. We've got everything reconnected on the uh, car here. The last thing you need to do once you have everything in place is uh, start the engine and check for leaks. Uh, you've got a lot of different places. Uh, you've got this this diaphragm here that seals on top and bottom. You've got this uh, gasket here for the for the cap that seals on both the top and the bottom side. Uh, you probably haven't really done anything to the inlet to change that, but your hose. Um, in this case, we didn't change the fuel filter, but we did uh, didn't disconnect the fuel filter assembly from here. But we did take the glass bowl off. We put a new filter in while we we're at it. Uh, we've got the connection to the outlet hose there going to the carburetor. All those are, since they've been disturbed, are potential leak points. You definitely don't want to just start this up and start driving until you've looked it over for leaks. Uh, once you start up, find no leaks, you're in good shape. Anything leaks, you just got to torque it down a little bit and you should be good to go. We're the West of the Lake Region Cadillac and LaSalle Club in the Chicago area. We make these videos to help you fix your classic Cadillac if you want to do it yourself or if you can't find a mechanic willing to work on older cars. Please like and subscribe to our videos. The more you subscribe, the more videos we can produce. If you have any questions or would like us to make a video showing how to repair something on your car, please drop us an email at westofthelakeclc at gmail.com or leave a comment below. We'll do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.